In this video, we're going to take a look at how to get started with Jupyter Notebooks and PowerShell. So I'm not a Jupyter Notebooks expert. I am also just getting started, and I just kind of wanted to step through the steps I took to kind of get up and running and understand the basic concepts of notebooks and uh, how to integrate PowerShell into notebooks. So I have a uh, Windows Server machine here that um, is running uh, PowerShell 7. Um, I also have the Visual Studio Code Insiders installed with the PowerShell Preview extension. I have Azure Data Studio installed with the PowerShell extension. I have Power or Python 3.8.5 installed. Um, and then I have the .NET Core uh, SDK, uh, .NET 3.1 uh, SDK. So um, what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to install um, Jupyter. So to do that, uh, you use pip install Jupyter Lab. So if you haven't used pip before, uh, pip is pretty much install module for um, Python. So it's going to download all the dependencies we need for Jupyter Lab, and then once that's done, it's going to do a little configuration, and then we'll be able to uh, continue on. Now we've successfully installed uh, Jupyter Lab. So it took about two and a half minutes on this machine, but I skipped past all the progress bars. So the next step that we need to take is we need to install .NET Interactive. We're going to use the .NET command line tool to actually uh, install this as a global tool. Uh, .NET Interactive provides the integration um, into Jupyter uh, Notebooks so that we can uh, create notebooks for C Sharp, F Sharp, um, as well as PowerShell Core or 7. All right, so now that uh, .NET Interactive is installed, we just need to register the Jupyter Notebooks um, for C Sharp, F Sharp, and PowerShell. So once that is done, uh, we'll be actually be able to start up Jupyter using the Jupyter Notebook command. So this is actually going to start up a web server, and then it's going to open a web browser. I'm going to use Chrome. And then this is actually going to load the Jupyter uh, web interface, which most people probably use. Um, and as you can see here, it opened in my local folder. So I was open in my like user folder, and I have all my folders here. But I'm actually going to click New. You can see here uh, I have Python 3 by default, but I also have all the .NET interactive ones, so um, C Sharp, F Sharp, and PowerShell. So now if I create a new PowerShell notebook, uh, it's going to use the PowerShell kernel. And the kind of the concept with Jupyter Notebooks is that you can have documentation and code kind of intertwined together. So right here I have a code block. You can see by this little drop down that it this is marked as a code block. You can also switch it to things like Markdown if you want to do something like a heading. It's a heading. And then you can create another cell underneath here. So um, I could add another cell, and you can see it adds a code cell. With code cells, what you can actually do is you can actually put um, code inside there. Since we're using the PowerShell kernel, we can put PowerShell script in there. And if I click Run on this, what it's actually going to do is it's going to uh, pretty much pass over this um, this command over to the PowerShell kernel, and then it's going to output the um, standard out to um, the Jupyter Notebook here. So it kind of allows you to create these interactive and um, intertwined with documentation uh, notebooks so that you can kind of uh, you know document things in, in an interactive way. Um, so let's actually go ahead and save this notebook. So we're just going to save this as my notebook. And that's going to save to my uh, users folder. So I've actually go to um, see users administrator. You'll see that I have my my notebook ipynb file. So if we actually open that in um, Code Insiders here, what you're going to see is that it is just a JSON file. Um, and inside this JSON file, uh, we're not only going to have like information about the different cells. Um, so you can see here that we have a markdown cell with the actual markdown uh, code. But we also have um, pretty much information about the script that was run. And some really cool thing is that not only does it save pretty much what was output or input, but it also saves what was output. So you can actually save notebooks that contain the output of the command that should be run. So it's a cool way to kind of uh, demonstrate to other people like uh, what you should expect from that particular notebook. All right, so now that we looked at uh, kind of the notebook UI, let's actually take, oh, before actually I actually move on, I want to show you something pretty cool that's available in the .NET um, kernel. Um, 
So integrated into Jupyter Notebooks is uh, Plotty, which is a Python library for creating um, charts. So what you can actually do with uh, the .NET kernel, like interactive kernel, is you can actually create those charts. So um, for example, we have a little bit of chart data here. Uh, we're going to create a new bar chart. I'm just putting in some uh, test data on the x-axis, so a couple test uh, names. And then on the y-axis, I'm setting some values. And then um, from there, we actually are going to call new plotty chart, which is going to create this chart based on that chart data, and then output display. So if we run that, what you're going to see is it is actually going to create this test chart. So it looks a little weird. I probably need to make the height a little bit higher. Um, and if I run that again, you can see there's my test chart. And if you hover over it, that's a plotty chart uh, right inside uh, my Jupyter Notebook. All right, so now that we kind of looked at uh, Jupyter Notebooks in the web interface, let's actually take a look at Azure Data Studio. So um, if you crack that open, Azure Data Studio will look very familiar if you've ever used the Visual Studio code. Uh, it's a very similar interface. It's, all, it's probably built on similar technology. I know it's built on Electron, um, but I'm not sure if it's actually based on uh, Visual Studio code. So once this loads, um, I'm actually going to stop my Jupyter application in the background here. And there's a couple of things I want to do when I first open um, Azure Data Studio. First, I'm going to enable these preview features. On the left-hand side, you'll see that I've already installed the PowerShell extension. Uh, so it's the same PowerShell extension that goes in Visual Studio Code. Um, the other thing that I want to do is if I go to the settings, uh, I'm going to go to the settings UI and search for preview. And if you click Notebook, I'm going to enable um, the preview kernel. So it's going to show all the kernels from the current notebook provider. Um, now I can click File, New Notebook, and you're going to see that we have uh, not a similar interface, but same concept as we saw in the Jupyter Notebook web UI, where we have cells that allow you to do code and text. And you can select your kernel at the top here, and then you can run the cells. So I'll actually hit this drop down, and I'm going to click PowerShell. And the first time you click PowerShell, it's going to ask you to configure the Python runtime. Um, I'm going to use the existing Python runtime because I already downloaded um, Jupyter using the command line. So now it's going to do something similar to if I were to run this on the command line. You're going to see in the bottom here, it's going to install the um, notebook dependencies. So you can see a lot of these requirements are already satisfied because I actually went ahead and um, installed this on the command line. One thing you'll notice that's installing here is the uh, PowerShell kernel. Um, and now the, um, the installation is complete and it's actually starting up the notebook server. At the top here, you can see that uh, the kernel has been switched to PowerShell. Uh, if you hit the drop down, you'll see that we also have our .NET interactive kernels. So we have the .NET um, PowerShell, which will be PowerShell 7. But what I'm running here is actually PowerShell 5.1. So if you use PS version table, and then um, what's going to happen is you're going to see the PowerShell uh, extension activate. So here's the PowerShell integrated console opening up. And um, once that's available, we can actually uh, run this script. And it's actually going to send that over to the PowerShell kernel and ex execute the uh, code for us inside Jupyter. So you can see here I'm running PowerShell uh, version 5.1. So uh, very similar to uh, the web interface, you can click cells and you can hit uh, code or text cell. So if I hit text cell, I can do a very similar thing as I could in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, I can do headers. I can do things like uh, lists um, and even images if I want to. And it gives you a little preview on the right hand side here. And if you click off of it, then it actually renders the markdown for you. Um, some interesting things to know about um, Jupyter Notebooks is that uh, they are actually kind of have persistent state. So for example, if I do a get random here and store it in a variable, um, what I can actually do then if I add another code cell and then I do test to output that variable, I'll run this first one. That doesn't give me any output, but it stores a value in that test variable. Um, and if I run the second one, you're going to see that it actually gets the value from that test variable. So it actually has this persistent session uh, back inside of um, the Jupyter Notebook. So you can continue on here. You could uh, add all kinds of images and that kind of thing. You get really creative in terms of um, outputting uh, HTML and Markdown and that kind of thing. Um, and if you notice, when we save this, I'm just going to save this to my desktop. 
uh, is notebook zero. And very similar to, um, or not similar, exactly the same to the web interface, what you'll notice is that it's going to save it as this IPYNB file, and it's going to have uh, the cells in it. Um, so you can see that I have my code cell with uh, get random, but it had no output. And then you can see that I have my other cells that actually have the output. So it's uh, storing the output along with the actual documentation and code for my notebook. Um, so that was kind of as deep as I got into inside of um, notebooks. Um, one thing to note is that uh, with the Azure Data Studio and the PowerShell extension, you actually have IntelliSense inside your notebook, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can get really creative in terms of the things that you create here. Um, you can actually share these notebooks pretty easy, as you saw that um, they are just JSON files. And you can upload them to um, MyBinder, which is a pretty much online repository of um, notebooks that you can share with other people. Uh, there's one other thing that I kind of want to touch on, and that is um, I want to look at the uh, Visual Studio uh, Code um, Insiders edition with the PowerShell preview extension. So I actually am running insiders here and I have the preview in section uh, installed. And then you can actually uh, go over to the settings for this guy. And if you click the UI and you just search for toggle um, and then click on the PowerShell configuration, you'll see that there's this cool new uh, show toggle button for notebooks. So let's turn that on. and. What's going to happen is if I actually create a file, a PS1 file, so we'll just save this as um, test.ps1, um, uh, that's going to activate uh, the PowerShell extension. And you'll notice that there's a new icon in the top right here, enable notebook mode. So notebook mode allows us to actually use PS1 files as notebooks. So this is a little different than... Um, the actual Jupyter Notebooks. This is actually a notebook mode where we don't actually use a JSON file to store our data. We're just storing it in a PS1 file and then we're actually um, kind of having the notebook behavior uh, used inside of our PS1. So the way it works is you actually have uh, comment blocks and in the comment blocks you can actually use Markdown. So you can say things like, hey, uh, this is a header and if I save that and then I click this little button here, it's going to actually render that and it's going to add a new cell here that is um, that header. So you can get really cool creative with this. Um, some things that I've done are like playing with images and that kind of thing. Um, you can do underscores for italics. You can include images. And then if I click that, you'll see that it'll even render my cool monkey here. Uh, in addition to um, putting comments in, you can also put just arbitrary code in. So rather than having to uh, edit that JSON file, you're just editing a PS1 file. And then you'll see here that now we have these cells, which you can uh, move around. You can add them similar to the Jup uh, Jupyter Notebooks experience, where you have a markdown and code button. Uh, but you also have cells like this one that you can execute. So it behaves a little bit differently. You notice inside Jupyter Notebooks, uh, underneath this particular PS1 file, um, or this particular code segment, it would have the output, and then it would store that inside your Jupyter Notebooks JSON file. Uh, but in this case, what it actually does is it outputs in the PowerShell interactive window. So um, I really like this concept. Uh, I think it's pretty cool because it's just a PS1 file. You don't have to install anything special to get this working, except for the extension for Visual Studio Code. Um, but uh, you can't uh, store the output like you can with the Jupyter Notebooks extension, so it's a little different in terms of uh, the behavior. But I think it's a cool concept, and uh, like I said, this is currently in the Insiders Edition and Preview Edition of the PowerShell module, or extension. Um, so if you feel like uh, giving this a shot, definitely get this stuff installed. I'll include um, all the dependencies that I installed in the notes for this video, and if you like videos like this, definitely subscribe to my channel.